It's The Journey with drug and alcohol attorney Mark G. Aster. All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of The Journey. As you can see, we've got a pat room here, really special show. I'm sharing the show with my good friend Alan Mednick, who is also the host of The Real Convo podcast, and he's a board member of the American Foundation for Prevention of Suicide. I got it all that in one go, right? Not bad. Well, reverse. American Foundation for all Suicide right. Prevention, but I'll See, let you get away with that. Really it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to my right is my uh, <laughs> now brother from another mother because we have bonded, yes. Stu- Stuart Coffin, who's the uh, creator and producer of that really, really awesome show on A&E called Addiction Unplugged. Thank you. I have uh, across the table from, uh, from how, how did you guys bond? Was it the PSA test? Yeah. That yeah. you yeah. told yeah. him about that yet? There's no such thing as off the record. I just want you to know. Hot mic all the time. It was a discussion. We're was talking about this stuff. My medically Stu privileged information on my podcast. That's not happening. <laughs> Jay, Jay's going to edit this stuff out. Across from me is uh, Sean uh, Nassif, who's the co-founder of Rebound. And I guess our special guest is Jason Williams, who... You played in the NBA, but I don't think the fact that you were an all-star in the NBA really, at the end of the day, is going to be what you're remembered for. I think you're going to be remembered for what you're doing now, which is rebound and all the people you were helping. And I got a chance to learn a little bit about you because I watched Stu's show. And uh, I guess I'm honored and privileged that you came to talk to us. And uh, I think you're an inspirational guy. Well, thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Stu, Sean. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for the kind words. I didn't get a chance to watch Stu's show. I, of course, I had a chance. We had a screening. I've uh, made a conscious choice not to watch stuff that brings me back 20 years ago because I lived through it every day. Um, I go back and watch me maybe my 15 appearances on David Letterman and stuff when I'm <laughs> laughing and joking. I might watch some highlights of me playing basketball. But anything doing having to do with the accident that I had some 19 years ago, uh, it brings up too much for me, and emotionally, I bring down the room with it. Um, I think I'm a warning or an example to most folk, uh, but when they come to rebound and futures, I think I'm both. Um, they get to hear my story. So, um, so I heard so many great things. Like I know we had a screening; 400 people, Mark, came down, and uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Uh, and, and my family called me, which really doesn't call me about these things, because they rather me stop taking a scab over the wound and said that Stu did a fantastic job on addiction on plug. Thank you very much. That's right. I got to tell you, I mean, and I told this to Stu, if he doesn't get in a wolf the show, I, I mean, I'd be absolutely shocked because every single one of the of the episodes is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, yeah. It really is. And I don't Great. say that because Congratulations to you. sit next to yeah. me. I watched all the rest phenomenal. of them. Phenomenal. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's I a did. fantastic show. And what, I just got to say one thing about the show, too, and about what mm-hmm. you're doing. It was unbelievable because it brings hope. It really, it's not one of these shows out there just to get, you know, controversy to get ratings. Your show's going to get ratings, and it's going to be, a, like like Mark said, an Emmy winner. But if that's the right one, I'm sure it's Emmy or mm-hmm. Grant. Mm-hmm. You mind if I win an Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. But it's a, it brings hope. It shows that people go through struggles, and they could overcome them, and then they could help other people mm-hmm. the way you're doing it, mm-hmm. which is incredible. So I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. Well, thank, thank you. you. And, and, you know, the... The joy for me was meeting, you know, Sean and obviously you guys and Jason and showing some great uh, stories, you know, from the uh, rock bottom to, you know, uh, recovery and then helping others. And a lot of people that are not uh, in recovery or not in this world, they don't understand recovery. It's, you know, a lot of people that think that you just recover and that's it. And what the show does is shows that people like Sean and uh, uh, Jace, Jason help a lot of people. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Alan, you're doing a, uh, unbelievable things I also. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's true. So, Jason, tell, me, tell us a little bit about what Rebound is really about because it's so unique. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, we teach through Outdoor Adventure Therapy, 12-step program. Uh, We're under the umbrella of Futures Recovery Healthcare. Uh, We have psychiatrists, psychologists. um, We have detox. uh, But what makes us different every single day, 
for about three or four hours. We're jumping out of airplanes. Uh, we're scuba diving. We're hydroboarding. That's the hose that goes on the wave Told runner. We're, we're kayaking. <laughs> still, we're deep sea fishing. I said, right? after I saw that, I yeah. said, still a text. I'm like, I think we can hang out one Sunday with Jason and some of those guys. <laughs> so every day we're outside because we truly do believe that this overcomes uh, anxiety. It builds self esteem. It breaks down barriers and it breaks the monotony of the day. But what it does is, we were just talking before that if you have an active mind, you got to have an active body, right? Anxiety and depression comes from fear. Fear comes from the unknown. So we stay busy, and then we go back and we get the regular treatment that everybody else does, and then we go to meetings. Uh, but what we try to do is, if you come to Florida, why come to Florida and be on the air conditioning all day? You can do that in Minnesota right. in January, right? Come here, get out of the Freon, go outside, get some vitamin D. We like to have our classes outside on the beach, on a kayak. Uh, with just a high intense program. I meet Sean every morning in the gym at 3.30. Uh, I get up at 3.30, I meet him at four o'clock. We go from four to six. <laughs> but the biggest part, what I love about the program is when treatment starts, and that's when they leave, Mark. I mean, we have a app, there's a video messaging app. I was showing Alan outside that you can look on in 127 of our alumni, we go through and we speak to them every single day. And they can't pull the wool over our eyes because we can see them and like we have word of the day, might be, you know, today was free will. So um, what, you, what you're gonna do with your free time, your free will, and when they comment, I can see if they have on sunglasses and it's raining, I can see their demeanor. I can say, hey, you know what? Hey, Stu, let me see where you at. Show me your boss, show me your wife, show me your kids. Uh, so we keep each other accountable. And that's what gets people better. Accountability, structure, empathy. Um, and, you know, I have to bring it every single day, right? I got to come in as a 10 because that's why I get to the gym. Because sometimes in the morning, I'm bouncing off the walls. I got to get down to a 10. Some days I wake up and I need to pick myself up because I only got 30 days to get somebody better. So I can't have an off day. Right. Yeah, so you said there's like, there's, like, there's like three different levels of the program? Yeah, it's three different levels. Um, you have Orenda, which is the top of the line. Uh, that's where you go in and it's uh, just the same as rebound. You stay in the same kind of conditions, uh, but you're not jumping out of airplanes. Uh, you're not uh, in the water. That's an option to you. You can bring that on, but rebound is a much more active program. It's a place where you want to come in, you want to get... You know, drop 15 pounds or put 15 pounds of muscle on in 30 days. It's uh, very uh, high intense, uh, very much inspir inspirational. A lot of coaching goes on there. You know, we're like, there's no, you know, I'm going to sleep in today until 11 o'clock. It's like, nah, nah, let's go, get up. You know, um, one of the best things that alumni has ever told us is that rebound, why they love the program, they don't tell you what not to do. They show you different things to do to have fun. So you'll learn 19 different activities that you have never done. Uh, in your life, most people. So when I went on vacation, now I'm learning, you know, instead of being in the casino and the bar, I'm learning, you know, everybody comes to our program, most likely get scuba diving certified. Everybody works there scuba diving certified. Um, so I'm going to see the bottom of the ocean now. I'm on top of the water, I'm on the beach instead of hung over, like the beds are better than the Bahamas. And then the other program is the core program, um, where you pretty much are in class, you're getting all the tools that you need, and you get us for like an hour in the day, uh, in the beginning, we get there seven to eight, and then we do something from four thirty to five thirty. But you're on campus most of the time. Right, right. And one of the things I just have to add there with what you're doing, what we talk about with suicide prevention is you got to create a purpose, and you got to have something for them to look forward to. What you're doing is you're putting an environment for them where I mean to go skydiving, to go to do all these things. It's a purpose that they want to get better, and once they start doing that, they see the beauty of the world. Mm -hmm. They see the beauty of the, I mean, I've never been skydiving, but I'm sure when you go with the freedom that you have there or going to see the beautiful in the sea, mm -hmm. what you're doing is giving a purpose. And then what you're doing with the app does the same thing. Cause I gotta tell you, I'm sure a lot of these people look forward to waking up in the morning and seeing what the word of the day is or whatever you're doing and then contributing to that. So that's something for them to look forward to. So everything you're doing, I think is incredible. And I've never heard of that before, what you're doing. So I got to commend you on how you came up with that. Right. I don't know, but it's phenomenal. And I just want to say something. You know, um, Futures is a beautiful place. I mean, it, it's it's like uh, Four Seasons. It's, it's beautiful, right? But what Jason does, and I, you know, I've been to uh, rehabs all over the uh, U.S. What Jason and uh, Sean does uh, do is out of the box, you know, and everybody has the same pr uh, program. 
you know you have to have the the, the groups you have to have the one-on-ones but it as far as out of the box this is what you know what uh, Jason and uh, Sean does and it, it's it's just different and it's it's uh, attacking the problem for from a, a different angle and with the um, the app that is tremendous you know everybody you know uh, goes to uh, Facebook or they email or they're uh, they're chatting with their uh, alumni this is way better mm-hmm. and it's you know and it's engaging every day and that is you know that's the, the key just like you said mm-hmm. you have to be engaged every day and it's it's uh, it's unbelievable what, what you guys are doing yeah, look I think just I think we all have to have purpose I know for me after I you know, left the prosecutor's office and practiced law I was miserable and I, I have a friend of mine she's a therapist I called her up one day I said I think I'm depressed she said you're not depressed you're bored you don't have any purpose mm-hmm. get out of bed and go and help somebody and have purpose see if you still feel depressed and you know what she's mm-hmm. right and I'm not saying that people don't have real depression and stuff but sometimes what we think is depression is really the fact that we just haven't found a way to go and help other people and if, once you do that it totally changes things and I notice the, the one message I got out of what your program is about it's about helping people and making a difference mm-hmm. and the people that I saw that you interviewed I mean, once they found purpose, because you had purpose, it totally changed their their outlook on life. Yeah, Mark, it told me Curtis Martin, the Hall of Fame running back for the Patriots yeah. and the New York Jets, <laughs> teaches Bible study and has a conversation. And so our, all our alumni and everybody get on this phone call, and uh, you saw him at the premiere. He's yeah. big in charge. We got Charles Barkley's involved. Charles Oakley's involved. Who, by the way, is a big Michigan you know? fan. I just want to put that out there. He's picked Michigan to win the last double incident. Who's uh, that? Charles always picked Michigan to win the NCAA. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> all right. We don't have to go to, I don't have to, go to Michigan. <laughs> when Charles picked us last year to win it, I said, that's a curse. We're definitely not winning it. And, and, Mark, and Mark, Charles needs rebound. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't water in Charles's cup. Just <laughs> that's for sure. But, <laughs> but, you know, Curtis Martin taught us in Bible study that where the needs of the world are going this way and uh, and your skill and ability is going this way, where they intersect, that's your purpose. You know, I wanted to coach St. John's University. That was a dream of mine. But since I got down here at, at Futures, at Rebound, I can't teach a kid how to do a jump hook or a jump shot or running down. When they helping me help others save my life. Right. You know, so like today when we leave the show, we're going over to the airport. We got to drive all the way to Jupiter, get in the company car because this is short go to the airport pick them up help them get adjusted and then go down and we'll play volleyball in the pool with the rest of the uh we call them teammates not clients because i'm in there with them uh and and then i'm probably get back home around 8 15 and i'm in bed by nine o'clock i'm out and start the whole day over and the letters and the I mean, you were just talking about, we were just talking about, you just showed me a text, Alan, outside. When you get, when you, sometimes you wake up and me and Sean, Sean, we pick each other. We're all crazy, but we're not crazy <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> which is what helps us, right? So when we're outside, Alan just showed me a text. He's like, this is why I do this. Look at this text. And some days I'm like, God, this is just too much. You know, I, I just can't do it. And all of a sudden you get a phone call from somebody who, you know, you might have played against maybe somebody at Georgetown University where we were just talking about, and you can't stand that guy and played against him in the NBA, and they go, hey, man, I got a loved one that needs help. And you're like, wow, this guy called me. Like, I love that responsibility. Right, right, right. right. I, yeah, thank you, God, right? Because I get another 30 days of, of, of helping somebody that helps me. You know, so, and so sometimes I go, man, you know, I, I, I can't do this no more. It's just too much. And as soon as I do that, God says, all right, here you go. Here goes somebody. Right, right, you know? right. Here goes a 19-year-old. You know? here, goes a, here goes you know, a 26-year-old. Here goes an 81. We had an 81-year-old guy. Can I t- we yeah, got some yeah. time? Yeah, let's talk. I only wait like six months to get him <laughs> do I have time, right? We were just home. He was our first. He was our first client, right? So we start this thing, rebound, and our first client calls up. The guy sound like he was 40. And we were like, okay, we're going to pick the guy up, right? And we were like, look for this guy. This guy goes, how you doing? He's like, oh, you want to take a picture? Like the guy's all around me at the baggage claim with Sean. I'm like, all right, brother, okay, let's take a picture. You know, he's like, ah, let's take a picture. So I walk over here and we're waiting for the guy. The guy's still following me, right? But you know, he's older. Really, really old, he's 81, right? So 81 years young. So I'm like, oh. I go, my man, I go, um, I'm just waiting on somebody named Earl to come through. And he goes, I'm Earl. And I went, <laughs> So we had to come back when our first client was 81. And he was like, I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going in that water. 
I ain't never been to the beach. I'm 81 years old. I'm not going to water. I said, come on, you're going to water. It's going to be fine. So right about that time, we had about three more NBA players to check in. We started building. We had about 20 people. And then we went to the beach, and Sean do, a, do what he does, you know, MMA fighter. He goes over and says, Errol, you got to get in that water. Everybody get you in the water. Everybody, everybody <laughs> participate. Oh, right, well, man, nobody going to scare me. I'll go in the water. I don't want to go in the water. <laughs> he went in the water, never been in the beach, right? So he, he, he doesn't even know how soft the sand is. So he takes a step, and we all act like we're not watching him, right? So we don't want him to be embarrassed. So he says, oh, man, this is okay. Right? Takes another step about 10 seconds later, and then we're looking back, and we're watching this wave go. Uh. <laughs> all of a sudden, this wave comes, and, <laughs> and he gets, it turns him upside down, and twists him upside down, his feet are on the back. Right? the guy. And, and it rolls him back onto the sand. His shorts come off, he pulls him back up, he comes back in, and he goes, man. I had back pain for 52 years. He goes, man, that thing cracked my back. I'm ready to go. And he goes, <laughs> you know, but that, that's the kind of experiences that you never had. Right, right, right. You know, over the horseback riding, yeah, people, you know, some people fall off horses, some people, um, you know, uh, the first time we went skydiving, you know, the first time uh, Mark, our therapist, went first. The first time he went up and the NBA players were like, Hey man, that don't look right. This not coming out. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's okay, it's okay. You know, all of a sudden, well, splat, and we run out. I'm going, oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm nips. I can't take this. I'm like, this guy. And then look, and it's the first parachute. He pulled it, and it ripped, and it didn't open, so they cut it loose. And then we see him coming. He landed in the cane field. So the guy Dave, we roll over to, <laughs> who has about twenty thousand jumps, right? We roll over to him. I go, Dave. I go, man, what happened? He goes, he's barefoot, big, country strong guy, you know, and he goes, sometimes the magic works and sometimes it don't. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, you have nothing to worry about with me. He goes, when, the, when you're 13,000 feet up and he says, the cows start looking like ants, that's good. He says, but when the ants start looking like cows, <laughs> splat, that's a problem. <laughs> Well, oh. I just got to say one thing. You were talking about St. John's and wanting to coach there. But you coach, you know, at St. John's you coach, what, 12 kids a year? Yeah. Okay. How many kids are you coaching oh, right yeah, now? This is exactly So right. you're getting out there mm -hmm. and your you're role model, people are looking up to you so, like, so much more now probably than they ever mm -hmm. did or ever will again. Because when you tell your story, and I know I was talking with Audra outside, your partner, and I told her, Every day, by me telling a story about you know my experiences, people come up to me and share their stories, and they'll tell me you know what they're going through. They're looking for help, and I feel like if I don't tell the story, that no one's gonna they're gonna keep in silence. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is far beyond that, um, because you're actually getting people in and helping them and staying with them and keeping in contact with them. And it's amazing what you're doing. So. Don't go coaching St. John's, okay? That's the, that's the story get, here. Right. You're coaching so many more football, people right now. I think the, right football, I think the now. head football coach at Michigan position is going to be up yeah. soon. No, that's okay. If you want to coach Michigan Everything football. will be a double I'm, reverse. I'm recruiting right now. <laughs> I'd like to know what Sean, what Sean yeah. how you. Yeah, yeah well, I don't, so you got a, you have a, martial, a mixed martial arts background? Yeah, since I was uh, five years old, my mom, uh, she trained martial arts. She was a black belt in judo and kickboxer. And um, I'm we, with his mother. She's yeah, like, yeah. 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 Oh, so you, you just opened the door right? here, Mark. Right. Yeah, Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. She sounds like Ron. No, she sounds like Ronda Rousey's mother. She's attacking you in the middle of the night while you're right. asleep. Just that. see if you can armbar. Listen, listen, he does Krav Maga. I want to know yeah. if MMA can take Krav Maga. It depends. I don't know if MMA can take him, but but his mama Wendy will. She sounds like his mother could whoop the both of us. Okay, so it don't really matter. If I whooped him, his mother's whooping me. If I don't, she's still whooping me. His mother about six three, about two fifty. Right, and has a foot like this, and she can put a board up here and and kick it and break the board up really? here. And they call her, right? She's Scandinavian, right? Yeah, she's a she's Viking. No, she's Norwegian. And, and she's Norwegian, and, uh, and they call her Thunderfoot. <laughs> <laughs> so his, his daddy's yeah. name is Juan. So he said, she said, Juan, be home by 1130. Yeah. <laughs> My dad said, si, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Si, senorita. <laughs> He's yeah. Yeah, coming home at uh, 10 o'clock just to be uh, safe. <laughs> just to be safe. There's no discrepancy. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I started at 5, and um, we lived in Miami. And, you know, my mom, you know, I was a shy little kid. And I guess you can call it at this day and age, it'd be like a sort of anxiety. I had a nurse, but They give medication school. for that yeah, these days, you, right? Instead of sending you to martial arts. Yeah, back then my mom was like, you know, my mom was very energetic. You know, she was, I was the oldest of three boys. And then she had my dad, and she was the youngest. Uh, she was the youngest daughter of three boys, so there was, there was a lot of good around boys. She's a rough and tough person, 
And um, she saw how much of like a, I guess, kind of a quote unquote sissy I was. I didn't like any kind of, any kind of stimulation. And you know, if I got an A, it was like, good job, I go hide. If I got a bad thing, you know, bad no sticker or whatever, she's like, hey, you know, we gotta work on this. I'd still go hide and cry. And she was like, okay, none of this. Started martial arts young, was a great confidence builder, uh, self-esteem, nice. activity, and she kept, and that kept me busy my whole life. It wasn't like a seasonal sport where you know, all these other sports, you, know, you have a season, and then in the off season you get in trouble, right? Martial arts is all year round. Use it or lose it. Yeah, that's you right. Keep so, training. And um, I, it just kind of stuck with me my whole life, and it was great for, you know, like I said, uh, you know, getting rid of anxiety, self-esteem, because the person you're training with, there's a mutual respect there. You're, you're both there for the same reason, and that, that was a great part of it. So do you integrate any of that into the program? Yeah, we do, but let me tell you some great stories. So <laughs> every once in a while, we get the little guy comes in, 19 years old, you know, uh, lives up in the, in the hills, right, and comes into the inner city, cops some drugs, uh, thinks he's a gangster now, right? Uh, very wealthy young fellow who thinks he's a he's a gang or Diddy Baba or whatever you want to call it, and he comes in and they got their hat on backwards when we pick him up from the airport, you know, come walking around like I ain't taking this stuff, and then my mama, you know, asked me to come here. The only reason I'm here and this and that. So we introduce him. Everybody in our place looks like Sean and I. You know, we're small guys. Everybody's in you know big guys in great shape. We work out together all the time. So we put Sean out there. And uh, we do MMA, and then we have that kid stand up, and we're always on our dock, right? And uh, he looks over at Sean, he's like, yeah, I do this, you know, all the time, whatever. And we say, like, hold this. Right? So he holds up the cushion, right? And Sean goes, and he kicks it, right? And the kid and the thing go right off the dock, <laughs> right in the water. He come back up and he goes, oh, man, can I call my mom? Right? And, no, then, and then that's you when cannot the, call right? your mom. You can call his mom, right. but not your right. own mom. So it brings them right back into purpose. Like, look, you know, this is for real. We got some real men. And we teach people how to become, you know, uh, productive citizens. Uh, so that's that's just one of the stories. But. It, that's I love it. Well, I mean, for me, it's it's really like the only it's the one thing I do where I, it's my I call it my place of peace. I just completely shut the rest of the world out. If I'm teaching class, I'm focused on my students. I don't think it about anything else. Yeah, it's great. It's it keeps because me look look how many times when I went to treatment, they asked me. Uh, uh, my therapist was Cody, and Cody's now our clinical director at Rebound, but he's a therapist here at Futures. And what he taught me was, he said, he said, first of all, he said, Jay, you got to give it all away to keep it. You know that. I said, yeah, I know that. Um, he says, well, I have a kid here who just came in. He's 18. He wants to play basketball with you. I said, oh, great. So we didn't even have a basketball hoop where we was called Rusty. So I went out there, asked the owner to buy me a ball. And it came. So I said, meet me out there at 6 o'clock. So I got out in the court at 6 o'clock in the morning. still dark. No kid until about 7 o'clock. So I went back to my room. Um, and that's what you did. It just, you sat around all day. So then the kid was like, I want an AMA, leave against medical advice. Uh, I don't want to leave. You know, Jason didn't play basketball with me. So I go to the kid's room. I go, what do you mean? You know, you didn't want it. I was out there on the court. He goes, no, on the court. He goes, I was downstairs. I said, where? He's in the game room. He would play me in video game, you know, uh, basketball 2000, <laughs> NBA or something. I said, no, nah, man, you get to play with me as a tangible. But that's the problem, right? When we throw basketball camps today, we don't even, we can't even get at a free camp 300 kids no more. It's difficult because kids are on their phone yeah. and technology, which is an addiction. So we help a lot of kids who can't get in front of their phone. Now they got the most beautiful parks in the world. Yep. You know, when we were growing up, you had the chain on there. There was uh, glass on there. Now they got these beautiful parks and they're empty. So just being active, getting somebody outside, you know, to get our first three, one of our first three clients were uh, hooked to a technology. Yeah. Um, we had uh, the Earl came in, he was older, he didn't mess with it, but the, the next kid came in. Yep. Yeah, yep. they were all hooked on technology. If and there was it, a and screen, he was stuck. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't, really? have any, couldn't have yep. any screens in a room. It was just completely, you know, even TV monitors in our, in our, uh, in our classrooms, we'd be like, do not. <laughs> Turn yeah. those things on, like please, even in lose. the vehicles. Yeah, the vehicles. Yeah, the vehicles. They look yeah, at the vehicles. Turn, they just TVs like, and ride. yeah, you put the GPS on, and it was just like. But once you got them outside, you know that was it. Once you got them playing and active, they left that stuff alone. It's just simple. I say this to our partner all the time. There is no white coat to this and stethoscope. There's no doctor that's going to cure it. My thing, you know, the doctor's here to stabilize you. Right. It's going to be. You getting outside and you getting in some vitamin D and some energy and some active. And then when you leave, having somebody to keep you accountable. We went scuba diving and snorkeling today, right? And one of the things we taught is that in three feet, or you have to stay close to somebody within three feet. That's why when you scuba dive, you don't use your hands because you can knock, you know, their breathing apparatus out of their mouth, 
right? So you have to stay close to them, but you can't use your hands. And that's your, your accountability, your buddy. Right. And that's what you need when you leave here. People go, oh, I don't want to mess with somebody for six months until they leave. That's when treatment starts. And I will not worry about anybody telling me, Jay, you spend too much time with the alumni. Jay, you shouldn't do a Marco Polo app. It's illegal. You can't be talking HIPAA laws and that. If to say, let somebody tell me from somewhere else to say, I cannot, I'm spending too much time with alumni. That's when treatment starts. But you're saving lives. You're saving lives, yeah. you know? Yeah. So there's a big difference between getting clean and staying clean, and that's, that's right. what I yeah, tell the families. I'll get your kids clean, but they got to work the program right. afterwards. Yeah, and I just so your facility does it? Is it like for somebody that's trying to get better, or is it somebody that's at a detox and then they come to you to sustain it? Or go ahead, Sean. Either way, you know, uh, uh, we have both. Um, you know, through the rebound program, if you want to sustain your health, you can come you know, to the rebound or render and do all these programs so if you've already even been through the detox you can come through and you've worked in your program rebound and render no problem you can come in there and work all you know continue your uh i guess road of sobriety um and do all those activities and really build a foundation for what you're going to now have for the rest of your life but if you are suffering from an addiction drugs or alcohol you come in oh, and you sure. want to come to rebound you come in you get yeah. detox just like any other program we're like any other program as far as psychologists and psychiatrists and the uh, only thing that makes us different that we're outside uh, most of the time with our psychiatrists and psychologists and doing outdoor venture therapy. So we specialize in drugs and alcohol and mental illness um, and gambling also. That's a big, you know, uh, how to have fun. Like we play softball on Sundays. We play golf. You know, how to have fun without gambling, you know, but we com you know, and being competitive, right? Right, right. So everybody wonder, oh, let's put throw a dollar on it. You know, let's throw some push-ups on it. Nah, let's root for each other, and let's not play and hope that each other do bad. Let's beat up on the course. Let's right, beat right. up on the ocean. Let's beat up on the other team. But let us know that we're sticking together. So, you know, we, we have a lot of people, because that's the only thing that can take the NBA down. Remember that. It's, n it's not drugs or alcohol. It's gambling. Yeah. And again, it's a family atmosphere that you're creating. So when you start, you know, doing the gambling, it becomes a competitive thing, and then you bring... <clears throat> starts it, it it i don't know the endorphins or whatever they call it but it becomes competitive and then if you lose you get emotional right and it's a high and a low and that's mm -hmm. what you're trying to avoid the highs and lows and keep a constant path right so it's a, it's a great it's a great and, <coughs> and what we're telling alan like i'm no guru to this i just a lot of energy you hear me i you know i don't have a degree in this i don't have anything you come in i'm gonna tell you my story i'm gonna tell you this program is designed by me because and Sean, but but mostly by me because this is what I went through. Um, it worked for me. Uh, I can't be in a classroom for 10, 12 hours a day sitting across from somebody. I have to be out there. And let me tell you something, Mark. You want to get to know somebody? Go go out and do an activity with them uh, where you have to be competitive. Uh, you know, if I sit across from you in this table, I can be anybody I want. Let me see you at 13,000 feet when I'm about to push you out the airplane <laughs> okay. on the bottom of the ocean. Let me tell us, right? don't go to the neurologist <laughs> you know? before you right. know. Right. We take motorcycle lessons at Harley Davidson. You know? So it's like three hours, you know? So three hours we do a motorcycle lessons and stuff like that to learn, you know. And, and you learn you learn a lot, you know, about somebody. And, you know, we get to see you when you wake up. We get to see you when you go to bed. But we get to see you in high-stress situations. And if I'm sitting across from you in a classroom all day like this, uh, which is needed also. Uh, you can be anybody you want to be. But we see your true characters when, you know, you're getting the ball spiked on you or you quit during the game or you're, you're losing and you start pouting, that kind of stuff. So t like, can we talk a little bit about your own journey? Yes. Because, I mean, that was really a big part of, of the show, Stu, and it right. was, to me, that was unbelievable. I think you're pretty, pretty much a walking miracle, mm -hmm. honestly. The fact that you're even sitting here is Thanks. Uh, really testament to your inner strength, I think. Thank you. So talk, talk about your own journey. I mean, when did, when did your own substance use issue start? Well, that we were talking about this uh, on that show. Uh, I was uh, abused by uh, a family member, and I have a father uh, who's African-American and a mother who is white, and we moved to the deep south of South Carolina trying to escape from New York racism. And this early 70s, go figure it out one day. <laughs> <laughs> and then Roots comes out, right? Alex Haley puts that yep. movie out. And uh, the school bus ride, here I am, a high yellow, yellow blonde hair, uh, a white mother and a black father. People have never seen this in this little town called Ritter. 
and we had a pig farm and then my dad made me feed the pigs every day which didn't help because uh, I got on a bus smelling like a pig I looked different and uh, you know roots is out so that that ride on the bus ride and they say that a person learns 70% of what they're gonna learn in their life they learn on the school bus uh, and every day man that bus couldn't get there quick enough because they just kicked my behind um, I had no place. I had no white friends. I had no black friends. Even my family members shied away from me. Uh, so I could became a good with my imagination. And I trusted people a lot. And then I had a family member, uh, an uncle, who uh, people say uh, molestation, but it wasn't molestation. It was, it was much more than that. It was painful. And uh, I could never, I was smart enough at this age to know I could not go back and tell my dad because my dad would hurt his own brother. Um, so I had to live with that, and that was painful. And then, you know, when I was 13, going on 14, came home and saw my sister lying in a pool of blood. Uh, she was a model for Salem cigarettes. She was beautiful. A guy robbed her for $2, stabbed her 17 times, and beat over the face with a hammer and deformed her. My sister was one of the first women in New York City to catch the AIDS virus. And back then, it's not like it is now. Unfortunately, we had to take back elevators, and when we, she was laying there, they, band, uh, they strapped her to the bed, and she had a, my mother would wear a hazmat suit to feed her daughter. I never did that. Me and my mom had issues for that for, to the day she died because I could see my mother feeding her own daughter with one of them hazmat suits on. I never did that. I stayed with my sister. Uh, she died quickly, six months. Uh, but she started using drugs with my other sister uh, because we had to take all the mirrors out of the house because her face was deformed. And both my sisters died for a guy named Sergio for robbing them for $2. Um, my third sister married an alcoholic. He came home, had a bad day, and made it bad for everyone because he shot my other sister in the face, rose, and killed her. Uh, then he killed himself. Uh, I ended up raising and adopting my two sisters' children, taking them to St. John's University. I lived on the campus, uh, off-campus facility, but near St. John's. And every morning I had to wake up around five o'clock, take my son to school, which was in Manhattan, 45 minutes each way, come back, wake my daughter up, take her to school. Then after I go to class and then go pick up my son, come back, pick up my daughter, then bring them to practice. And they're still in Luke Conaseca, Hall of Fame coach. I love him to death, but he practiced for five hours. Uh, and then I would have to help them with their homework, do my homework, put them, take them a bath, and then feed them, and still try to do what a 17-year-old does at the most famous university in the world. And the only accolade that I take in my life is that in four years of college, uh, they missed five days of school, and I got drafted for the first round. But the most important thing is that they never missed school. And people say, how did you do that? And I said, I didn't really have a choice. I never thought about it. Just did you it. Know? Yeah. And then uh, you guys know the rest of the journey. People didn't know that part of my life. Um, so I, how, how, when did you start, take up a, a basketball? Because I got the, the impression from mm -hmm. the program that it, was something you, you, it wasn't something you started doing at an early age. It was sort of it, later on. Yeah, it was later on. I, I, didn't, I couldn't play basketball because my sisters were dying, uh, and I had to raise their children even after they. So when I was 14 years old, I would look down from the window and everybody would be playing. But I would get a little window, about 45 minutes, Mark. And I, that 45 minutes where my little EJ would go to sleep and Monique would be with my mother, I would go downstairs and nobody would be there then, and i practice. But I practiced hard and, and fierce and, and at game speed. And so I got better in 45 minutes because everything I did was for real instead of just being a lolly-dolly, shooting around and running up and down with no purpose. I played really well, and I got really good in that 45 minutes every day. Uh, but I never wanted to play basketball. I just wanted to own a construction company and work with my dad. Right. And my dad looked at me, and he's an old Southern guy, and he go, you, you know, how much you going to charge us for you to go to St. John's to play there? And I go, no, Dad. Go, oh, you know, they, they, it's a scholarship. We're getting it free. And then when we got the contract and we started playing basketball, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but I always wonder how much better I would have been uh, – when I see Shaquille and all these guys, I had to check every day, and Michael Jordan, <laughs> it's because my dad didn't believe that he dribbled with two hands. 
basketball. <laughs> that, that ain't no job. That ain't no job, Jason. <laughs> so I had my CDL class A hazmat driver license. So I drove tractor trailer. He had a tractor trailer company, gas station, and a construction. So every morning we would have to get up and I have to load up a D8 bulldozer, put on the back, bring it to Newark, unload it, and then we have shoot around. That's when you go practice for about an hour before you play the game that night, go over your plays and the other team's plays. Then I would finish that about 12.30 and then I would have to go back and finish work. And then about 4.30, I knock off, I have concrete and grease, and I had to go play Shaquille O'Neal, and that was my life, my whole career. <laughs> and then my dad, because he was like, you know, he didn't believe that basketball was, but what he was telling me was that, son, you have a disease. You're allergic to f for idle time and alcohol. And he's right, because when the Nets finally did tell, you know, give me this big contract, and they told my dad, we don't want him on the scaffold or driving tractor trailers no more, we gave him a hundred million dollars. Well, he earned a hundred million dollars. He can't do that. My father said, "You don't want him. You just want him to play basketball <laughs> and not work." And he said, "Well, good luck with that." And he was right because without structure for me comes destruction. And I got to stay busy, and that's what happened. You know, I had an accident in my house. Um, that's something I have to live with every single day of my life. Um, is the reason why I don't watch or I don't do internet or, or any of those things. Uh, it's why I stay at Futures Recovery Healthcare every day at Futures and Rebound and working is because I'm not yet over that. Um, that's something that forgiving yourself for doing uh, a, a accident that could have been avoided and, and acting the way I did after that uh, and the pain that I caused my kids my family, his family, Mr. Gustafi's family, Mr. Gustafi, my fans, is something that when I do this interviews like this, I am totally finished. You know, and you know, like I'm drained. I don't like doing these interviews. My kids don't like me doing it because they got to go to school and hear it. Um, but this is something that I've chose to do to release the stigma. Me and Alan were talking before, you know, if you have cancer, you get chemo, and if you're addicted to something, you go get treatment. Um, I get anxiety when I have to come in here and talk about this. Uh, but God always comes back and interjects. Like We leave here, we're going to pick up a teammate or a client from the airport. So that picks me back up. But if I ever leave here, i got to go back to the gym, and I just brought up this topic. Like Alan did this great piece and said, did you watch it? I haven't watched or heard or read anything about me in almost 20 years. Um, I live breath by breath, not day by day. I live by trying to give everything that I have a way to keep my sanity and try to get my peace and, and, and forgive myself for taking something from a man all he's going to have and all he ever would have. So I apologize for that and I take full responsibility for that. And I hope that more and more people come get help. If you don't come to Futures, Rebound, go somewhere and get help because life is pretty good when you're sober. If I could just say something. First of all, I, I really appreciate you saying that for several reasons, and you're a great man. I, I grew up in Jersey, I was telling you, and the Nets were my team, and I used to watch you play. You were my idol playing. Oh. Because when I saw you off the court with you know your teammates and everybody else, you had a big smile. You were a leader, and you built and you brought up everybody else around you from a fan's perspective. And when you got on that court, you were a leader on the court. Nobody knew what was going on in your life, but you were a leader. You were a man, and you know you did your job. I just want to ask what you're talking about right now. I know what I went through after my daughter passed, and I didn't talk about it. I didn't say a thing when I opened up. It helped me feel better. And what you're doing, I, I, I hope it makes you feel better opening up because you're helping so many people out there by just telling your story, no matter what happened, you're doing something fantastic. You 100%. really are, and you're helping people you don't even realize by just hearing your voice and knowing that you could get help and you could create a, a purpose for other people it, it's really inspiring it really is well you know thank you Alan 
it, it's no better feeling when we go through the gate of futures and people waiting to see you, right? You get 15, 20 people up at 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I feel safe there. I feel safe because I'm around people who are cracked but not broken. Right, right. You know? We could be repaired, you know? You know, I, only until, you know, I totally destroyed myself. And in the process of fixing myself, I discovered who I was. You know, so I'm around people and the sun is just coming up. And, and I could just reach out and hug everybody. And I'm like, this is my family. You know, these people, you know, I go to war for these people. Because I have family members. I have to feed Stu, you know, Mark with a long handle spoon. I got to take them like a prescription drug in small dosages. Right? But with, if I... When you graduate the program, if it says rebound behind your name, I pick it up no matter what. If my phone rang right now, it could be my brother watches. He's going to say, that's why. You know, <laughs> it, you know, it says brother. You know, uh, I'm not picking it up. If it said rebound, I would stop this interview to pick it up for our alumni. Because I know they're not calling and say, hey, Jay, um, you got this, that, and that. They're calling and say, hey, man, how you doing today? Or, hey, man. I'm struggling right now. You know what my boss told me? You know what my wife told me? You know what my kid told me? And then we work it out together, right? I don't care about, I don't like angles no more. I don't like people cutting into me. You know, I don't like, I, I like people bouncing stuff off me. I don't like shop corners. Let's just do this together. Like, I, don't, I just want to laugh and be happy and help people be, have fun. And that's when alumni, so when I see rebound behind your name, you know, I'm picking it up. I don't care what I'm doing. So I love what I'm doing. I finally found something that I'm pretty good at you know I'm, I'm pretty good through the grace of God right through the grace of God uh, helping people get better and stay better so I appreciate you guys man thank you well, I just want to say one thing you know when we uh, filmed at uh, futures I guess two months ago mm -hmm. my mother came she didn't know anything about Jason Williams and she was listening to your story and you're her favorite uh, basketball player ever. Oh. <laughs> and I, I get all these emails. I got all these uh, posts on uh, Facebook. And people are like, oh, my God. Like, and, you know, you, you're such a uh, charismatic leader that I'm sure, like, the AMAs at uh, Futures are zero. Because, you know what, you're, and, you know, Sean, and you are leaders and you are uh, you I guess keep everybody accountable it's real and, and, and that's real is right and people will not just leave because when you go to a, a, a different uh, treatment center people just leave mm -hmm. and I have to go to you to say listen I have to leave but you know I, I'm going to AMA I'm not going to do it and that's why you know futures and rebound are, are a great uh, alternative for treatment because people are not going to leave and you know their their parents will be very happy saying like you know and I, I know th these uh, guys and the the other guys from you know uh, gr uh, Jason's crew they're big mm -hmm. <laughs> and that no one's going to leave because you have to go through, you know, I, I'm not going to go through, uh, you know. And it sounds like, it sounds like Sean's mom is going to be like the lot. No, no, I, yeah. She's the, she's the, she's the, no, I can say, you know, I'm going to do with her, you know, so. <laughs> I, maybe I can convince uh, Sean it. that I'm going, yeah. but I'm not going to go from Sean <laughs> to Jason <laughs> and all the other guys right. who are just as, you know, uh, you know, big and strong and, uh, you know, they will keep the, you uh, accountable. I love it. But I think it's more, uh, okay, the physical part, okay, great. Well, I mean, but I think it's the love, too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, people could feel the love, mm -hmm. feel the sincerity, feel that you really care about them. And I think that's what will keep them there, too, and try to keep, and we'll keep mostly um, out of trouble and sober and, uh, and following the right path. Well, you know, anytime we go to New York, we go to Atlanta, we go to Cleveland, we always have some alumni. So when, and we talk every day. So we say, we go to, you want to go to St. John's game? So Sean's booking something in California right now to do something uh, with Big Boy Radio and a couple other shows. So we'll find our alumni there and they'll come out wherever they are in California or on the West Coast and we'll get together. It's just like, man, you think when becoming a born again Christian, uh, you'll go, I'm not going to have any more fun. You know, I can't do anything. And then you go, oh man, I can no. So the show looks right, like fun right. to me. And, 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 and then, you know, you become sober and you go, 
it's no fun. Like I, when people used to tell me I don't drink, I used to go something wrong with that guy. Right? I don't trust that guy. You know, and, you know, Coach Carter Secker used to always say, anytime you hear somebody tell you, the Coach Carter Secker is tired. You go, anytime you hear, hey, you remember when? <laughs> he goes, get going. You know, <laughs> and I said, well, people that don't drink, get away from them. Now I'm like, I can't believe that I sat down, Mark, at some dinners. Like right now, it's the most boring. You know, after, you know, you go down to and you have to catch a dinner. So the people I'm not sure about, I don't go to dinner with. Right, uh, the people that I am weary of, I do breakfast with. Right, because if I'm not sure where you're at in your life, I know at breakfast you're going to be at. And if I kind of know, and I'm not uh, lunch, but I'm not doing dinner with you if I'm not sure. Uh, because let me tell you something, they're ordering, their, the, you know, I'm ordering dessert when they order in appetizers. Because the conversation is just, I'm like, I can't believe that was me. I can't believe I could sit down six hours. I can't believe me and Sean would go to dinner, and I'm like, the bill will come back at like ninety dollars, and I'm like. They got that wrong, didn't they? And it's still after four years, you know, because, you know, when you used to go to dinner, it's $3,000. It's all alcohol. Yeah. Right? The money that you saved, the life you have now. It's true. So I want to know, how do people find out about Rebound, Sean and Jason? Sean? You can call 855-502-HOPE and get a hold. You know, sometimes Jason and I work the phone lines, maybe even get us. Uh, or you can go to www.futuresrecoveryhealthcare.com backslash rebound. And uh, that's our site. You get to see all of our stuff. And... Uh, Learn a little bit more about our program. I mean, it, it's a blast, man. So, and actually, if you could talk about, you know, do you take insurance? I mean, people have financial issues too. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Do you guys have like uh, insurance you take or? Yeah, we take insurance. We take all insurances. Uh, and with all the programs we have there, you're bound to find some sort of help with us. That's the great right. thing is that we have the different kinds of programs, and with all the you know. We're open to, we have uh, financing, we have everything there. So. And if you don't, just call us anyway, and we help you find some place if it's not right for you. You know, uh, I know Mark was telling me, and, and Alan told me you guys do interventions. If you ever need my help in doing anything, uh, you having an event, anything to bring awareness to this, uh, I, I just, I, it, it, it's so much fun, man, so much energy. You know, it's nothing like getting up in the morning and not having to act like you're sneaking in. You know, and having, you know, being the most energized person. You know, I, I, we had a guy, like, this would be the only, nobody ever wants to get off detox when you go to other places. I'm not beating down any other place because other places, uh, anybody in this business knows how hard it is. Right. But here, people come in and they're ready to get off detox right away because they're ready to start an outdoor venture therapy. You know, they're telling the doctor, look, I'm fine. I'm good. I want to get going. I want to get active. And if you have an active mind, you got to have an active body. You know, so that's just, just the energy of get going. When you have energy, you can deal with stuff. Let me just say this. I know you guys, I'm talking too much. But, you know, this. It's good. I, I, the worst defeats in my life is when I didn't have energy. My dad used to tell me all the time. He said, Jason, he said, boy, let me tell you something. You got to play at 110% just to be what Jack is at 70. He said, you know what potential mean? He said, everybody tell you, Jason Williams, Jason Williams got potential, Jason Williams got potential. Potential mean you ain't done shit lately, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. He said, you got to be going hard all the time to, to, to you know, to, to be what it was. And, that's, and, 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 that, and that is the truth. I love having more energy than it. You know, I love getting to bed early. I love being up in the morning and driving to work. Sean and I at 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock, talking to the alumni, people, you know, and getting to the gate of futures. And 15 or 20 people up when they say we can't get up, right? Us addicts and alcoholics can't get up at this time, especially in treatment. You're not going to get up. And people out there playing disc golf. We're playing wiffle ball. We're playing bocce, volleyball. You know, we're just doing all these crazy things. This golf, which people, you know, and uh, and then we have this own wing, which is pretty cool. Uh, um, our first responder wing for just first responders. Do you really? You know, yeah, PTSD, cool. man. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so we just went down to Louisiana for Noble, the National Organization for Black Law Enforcement Executives. They had 3,500 people of color who are law enforcement. We spent five days just hanging out with them, going to all their different stations and groups to find out what, you know, makes them tick. And all the pressure we talking about New York, yeah. Police officers. You said six people uh, have killed themselves since uh, June. Yeah. You know, so we have an all responders wing there, just in case if you are from local, and you come down here and you don't want to run into somebody, you know, uh, you can do it on that side. But most of the time, there they have their own special because pulling it a three year old out of a car accident, uh, the things that they see, the stress and that stuff that keeps in their mind. I know what I go through every day. Right. So only they can 
talk to each other and get it going. And then if they want to get with everybody else, they can. Well, one of the powerful things about that, that you're keeping them together, because I know when um, when veterans leave, the, when people leave the military, when they leave the uh, uh, their police station or a fire station, they lose a family. They feel like they lost their, their um, uh, you know, the people that understand them, and they don't feel like they could go back in. Mm -hmm. And that's another big problem with depression with first responders, that they think they lost their family. When you put them all together and they all understand mm -hmm. what they each went through, it's powerful. Yep. It really is. So that's incredible. Yep. I love it. So, Alan, give, give out the, uh, the information for your podcast, because this, this is our joint first joint <laughs> podcast. So it's Real Convo on WJNO, iHeartRadio, uh, 1290. It airs on Saturdays at 12 o'clock. Or you could go on to the iHeart web uh, page or the uh, the app and go to WJO and listen to it. Uh, Alan Alan's been getting some really good guests. I got to tell. I've actually I I know. Know. Yeah, he's, he's I've uh, actually been stealing. <laughs> <You're not> stealing <laughs> him. I turned on yesterday. Saw Miranda Khan. I'm like, I want Miranda Khan. So I sent her a message through Facebook. I'm like Miranda, you don't know me. I'm a friend of Alan's. Can you come on my show? She's like, sure. So then I called Alan. I said, Alan, Miranda's coming on the show on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So, Stu, give out the information for the show because I know we have a few episodes left to go, right? And also, no, 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 no. We're, we're done. They for can catch the reruns, though, right? Yeah, absolutely. On so, demand. So, you can go to uh, on demand on um, AE.com or you can uh, download it. Um, I think it's uh, AETV.com and you can watch it on your, uh, your phone, your uh, computer. And my website is uh, addictionunplugged.com. And when are the shows starting for next year? Do you know yet? So we actually we're, we're uh, planning it for we're going to probably uh, film in uh, uh, probably December or uh, January, and probably another uh, nine months. But uh, again, you know the the whole thing was getting more people into treatment, right? And that's you know Jason, you're doing it, you're doing it, uh, Sean, and you. Everybody is you know that is the the, the important thing. Just like you said, uh, Jason. Um, if you can call uh, futures, even if you don't have the, the right um, insurance, if you don't have any insurance, you know, Mike or Deja or mm -hmm. Elizabeth or someone will help you go to the, the right uh, resource. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not at, at uh, futures, someone will, you know, someone will right. help you. Yeah. Call 855-502-HOPE and then we we'll help you find some place. You know, even if you got to sleep on my couch, that has happened. <laughs> that has happened. We're gonna get you right. I love through it. the grace of God. And Mark, we got to thank you, man. Thank you thank for you for coming. You in. know, uh, I appreciate you. You know, you. I've heard so much about you. Kim talks about you, um, and uh, what you're doing to help release this stigma, and to help people get into uh, to treatment centers and beat this addiction is uh, much applauded, man. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Mark Astor, my man. I would never play Thank basketball you. with you. I might fight with him, though. He's not that much with him. Although Bad I'm not idea. messing with yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to get my mother yeah. down. She's like, fight him, leave his mama alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. So, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can find us on the uh, the web, drugandalcoholattorneys.com. You can email me, mark, at drugandalcoholattorneys.com. Or you can call us, 561 419 6095. Until next week, thanks for tuning in. Ah!